Hello humans, in this video we're looking at the nitrogen cycle. This is our second nutrient cycle that we're looking at for environmental science. Once you've made lots of notes from this video, don't forget over on the website there are loads of free flashcards, loads and loads of um, free questions to help you revise everything. A-level environmental science. Topic 2. The physical environment. Lesson 20. The nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is an element that constitutes 78% of the atmosphere, so is by far the most abundant gas. It exists as a nitrogen molecule with two nitrogen atoms joined together by a triple bond. Despite its abundance, nitrogen gas cannot be absorbed and used in this form as many organisms don't have an enzyme to break this triple bond and use the nitrogen to build their genetic material and proteins. As a result, bacterial species play a key role in making nitrogen available to other living organisms. Just as we did with the carbon cycle, we need to make sure we know the different forms that nitrogen can be found in each reservoir. In the atmosphere, nitrogen forms found here are nitrogen gas and nitrous oxide gases. In the hydrosphere, dissolved nitrates and ammonium ions. In the lithosphere, nitrates, nitrites and ammonium compounds in the soil and also minerals containing nitrogen. In the biosphere, genetic material, DNA and RNA and proteins. The roles of microorganisms in the nitrogen cycle. Decomposition the breakdown of dead organic matter to release ammonia or ammonium ions into the soil. Nitrogen fixation, converting nitrogen gas into a more usable form by breaking the triple bond and releasing the two nitrogen atoms. Nitrification, where they convert ammonium ions into nitrites and then nitrates in a series of oxidation reactions in the soil. Denitrification, Converting nitrates in the soil to nitrogen gas, which gets released into the atmosphere. We're now going to talk through the main processes in the cycle. You will need a diagram of the cycle for your notes, like this one. The four main processes. Nitrogen fixation. Nitrification. Ammonification. And dentrification. Nitrogen fixation. This is when nitrogen gas is converted into any usable form, for example, nitrates or ammonium. As explained earlier, it cannot be used by living organisms as nitrogen gas, as most do not have the enzyme to break the triple bond. But there are bacterial species that do have the enzyme, known as nitrogen fixers, as they convert it into a form that organisms can use to make DNA and proteins. There are multiple different types of nitrogen fixation. Firstly, the harbour process. This is an artificial process used to make inorganic fertilisers in agriculture. During the process, nitrogen and hydrogen are brought together in high temperatures and pressures to form ammonia. The high temperatures and pressures are generally created by the combustion of fossil fuels, so it isn't a very sustainable process. Once the inorganic fertilisers have been made, they can be spread onto soil to increase fertility. Secondly, ionisation. This is when lightning causes oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere to fuse and create oxides of nitrogen. This happens due to the high energy of the lightning, which provides energy for the reaction to take place. Thirdly, nitrogen fixation by soil bacteria. Free living, not in a symbiotic relationship, Bacterial species naturally found in the soil that have the enzyme to break the triple bond of nitrogen gas so they can utilise the nitrogen to build their DNA and proteins. Lastly, nitrogen fixation in leguminous crops. Legumes are pea and bean plants and they form a symbiotic relationship with a nitrogen fixing bacteria species that lives in their root nodules. The bacteria have an enzyme called nitrogenase which hydrolyzes the triple bond in nitrogen gas and they give the products to the plant. The plant can then use the fixed nitrogen to build their proteins and DNA. In return, the plant provides the bacteria with sugars they have made in photosynthesis, such as sucrose. Ammonification. 
This is the formation of ammonium ions. Ammonification is carried out by bacteria living in the soil using dead organic matter such as leaf litter or animal waste. The ammonium ions can then be used in other processes. Nitrification is one process that uses ammonium ions. It is carried out by nitrifying bacteria in the soil that convert the ammonium ions into nitrites and then into nitrates in a series of oxidation reactions where oxygen is added. This process is essential in increasing soil fertility as nitrates are the easiest form of nitrogen for plants to absorb through their roots. These bacteria are aerobic so require oxygen in order to complete this process. Farmers must keep their soils well aerated and well drained to ensure they encourage these bacterial species. Furthermore, their optimum pH is between 5 and 8, so a soil that is too acidic or too alkaline will have low numbers of nitrifying bacteria and therefore a lower fertility as less nitrification will be occurring. Exam top tip. If you are asked to label this on the diagram in your exam, have a look for a three-step process where ammonium ions are oxidised into nitrites and then nitrites are oxidised into nitrates. Denitrification. This is where denitrifying bacteria convert nitrates in the soil to nitrogen and nitrous oxide gases in the atmosphere. This process happens in anaerobic soils and reduces soil fertility. If a farmer's soil is compacted or waterlogged, then the amount of denitrification will increase, reducing soil fertility. Exam top tip. When labelling on a diagram, look for an arrow that points towards nitrogen in the atmosphere from nitrates. When you put all of these processes together, you have your nitrogen cycle. Remember to try not to think of these as only one step happening at a time, because in the environment, all of the processes we have talked about would occur simultaneously. The cycle part refers to the fact that they are cycling nitrogen between the different reservoirs. What are the impacts on the nitrogen cycle? As well as asking you to label missing sections in a diagram, the exam may also ask about how human activity can affect the processes in the cycle. The human activity that is going to have the largest impact on this cycle is agriculture, as a lot of the processes occur in the soil. For example, ploughing the soil and installing a water drainage system will both increase the aeration of the soil, encouraging nitrification. Sandy soils have larger air spaces between particles than clay soils, so they are more likely to have higher rates of nitrification. Using heavy machinery or having a high livestock density will compact the soil and increase the risk of flooding, both of which will increase the rates of denitrification. Inorganic fertilisers. This releases large volumes of nitrates into the soil at once, which plants will never absorb fast enough, so it ends up increasing the amount of nitrous oxide gases in the atmosphere. The timing of the application of these inorganic fertilisers can also impact their environmental effects. For example, if we apply inorganic fertiliser just before it rains, their incredibly high solubility will lead them to dissolving in the water, leaching out of the soil and running off into nearby water bodies. This sudden increase in nutrients in the water leads to an algal bloom on the surface, which blocks sunlight from reaching submerged plants. These plants can no longer photosynthesize, so die, which increases the number of aerobic decomposing bacteria which take oxygen out of the water. This process is called eutrophication and can lead to the death of other aerobic organisms in the water if dissolved oxygen levels are reduced to a point outside of their range of tolerance. Furthermore, the large scale release of nitrates into the soil leads to an increased rate of reduction reactions to form nitrous oxide gases which are released into the atmosphere. Nitrogen oxide gases are ozone depleting substances so increase the amount of UV exposure to living organisms by damaging the ozone layer. They also absorb outgoing infrared radiation as they are greenhouse gases and therefore contribute to global warming. Another human activity that impacts the nitrogen cycle is the combustion of fossil fuels in vehicle engines. 
The high temperatures in the engine cause nitrogen and oxygen to bond and create nitrous oxide gases, which are released in the exhaust gases. Methods that can be used to increase the sustainability of the nitrogen cycle. Anything that reduces our reliance on fossil fuels will help reduce the volume of nitrogen oxide gases into the atmosphere. For example, switching to electric or hydrogen powered cars. Switching to renewable energy sources for electricity generation would also reduce our reliance on combusting fossil fuels. We can also utilise some clean-up techniques to prevent nitrous oxide release from cars and exhaust gases. The first is called a catalytic converter, which is a chamber in a car's exhaust pipe that contains a metal catalyst which is able to reduce the nitrous oxide gases back into nitrogen and oxygen before releasing them into the atmosphere. Commonly, the catalyst can be made from platinum. Urea sprays can be used in an industrial setting where urea can be sprayed onto effluent gases and react with the nitrogen oxides and oxygen in the air to convert it to nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water. This process prevents nitrous oxide release but releases carbon dioxide. This process prevents nitrous oxide release but it does release carbon dioxide which is also a greenhouse gas. We can also manage agricultural practices to reduce our reliance on inorganic fertilisers to increase soil fertility. Some examples are listed below. Using organic fertilisers such as manure, which need to be decomposed so they can release the nitrogen more slowly, reducing chance of leaching. Cultivating leguminous crops as they will not require inorganic fertilisers to gain nitrogen. Minimal use of chemical pesticides, so soil biota are not harmed and can continue decomposing dead organic matter to release nutrients. Leaving an area of land closest to rivers free from crops and fertiliser use. This is called a buffer strip and should stop as much of the fertiliser leaching into the river. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.